Hello everyone, welcome to the Mechanical Vibration Tutorials. In this tutorial series, we are going to solve different examples and problems from the vibration topic, which is useful for the undergrad students in the fields of mechanical engineering, robotics, mechatronics, and so on. The main reference for this tutorial is the book Mechanical Vibrations written by Raul, and we are going to use the fifth edition. So if you have other editions, no problem, and you can use that one as well. In each tutorial or in each video, we start with some brief review on the content, and then we solve a problem accordingly. So let's start the first tutorial. So let's have a quick review on the content that we need for the vibration problems. So in generally speaking for the vibration, we have three main components that we need to consider for the problems. The first component is mass. So mass is basically anything related to the iner inertial forces. So if we have, for example, a lumped mass of M, which is moving in the X direction, so the force due to the mo motion is the inertial force, which is M X double dots, right? So if the system has a moment of inertia of J, for example, and the system has a rotation of theta, the moment resulting from the motion is J theta double dot, right? You may remember that from the dynamics. The next term that we need in the vibration problems is the stiffness or springness. So the stiffness has something to do with the spring, right? So imagine we have a spring with a constant of k so if this is the spring and k so we have a deflection in the system and the system is extended to a new position and the deflection is x so the force due to the extension of the spring is k x right which is the restoring force in the system and finally the term that we may need in the vibration problem is the damping so the damping has something to do with the energy dissipation in the system like a damper which could be a viscose damping or a friction damping but for the undergrad level we pretty much need the viscose damping so to show the damping in the system we can use this sort of shape and if we have a deflection on the system in x direction so the resulting force would be c x dot where C is basically the damping constant. In some notations, they call it as B. Okay, so with these all notations, let's go and start the first problem. One thing I want to add is we also have rotational spring and rotational damping. So you may see that in the problems that we have in the future. So let's do the first problem and see how we can use these components in modeling a system. Okay, so I selected this problem as the first case that we are going to solve in this tutorial series. In the next tutorials, we are going to have multiple examples, more mathematical calculations and doing actual problems in the vibration systems, right? So let's go over this problem and see what the problem is asking for us. So again, these problems are selected from the raw book, so you can find it over there, or you can find similar examples in the problem sets. So in this problem, we want to find the mathematical model for the vibration of a car. So as you see, the car is moving on a rough road, and the road has some sort of bumpy shape. These bumps in practice will cause a vibration in the system, right? So you can see the bumps which may cause vibration of the system in the vertical direction. It is important to properly model the vibration of a car in the vertical direction because it is important in terms of ride comfort and how a car can move without any severe vibration in the system. Okay, so let's see what the problem says. So the problem says that find basically the mathematical model for this car when we have the weight of the car body, the passenger seats, 
front wheels, rear wheels. So all these components, the body, the wheels, and also the passenger, sorry, I'm not good at drawing, has mass. The other term that we need to consider in modeling the system is the elasticity or the springness behavior of tires. So these tires have some sort of springness. Also the seats, right? The seats have some sort of springness and also the main springs, which means the suspension system, right? And lastly, the damping of the system and the shock absorbers and tires. So considering all these components, let's find the mathematical model for the car okay so let's do that okay so i made this drawing a bit larger to show you all the components one by one so let's first go through the mass components so we know that the front system the front wheel has a mass it means that we have like the wheel set as a separate mass in the front and in the rear separately right so the other mass of the system is the car but as you see the car is not a centered mass or a lumped mass so the system has like a mass distributed in the system and remember we consider the motion in a planar point of view we're not looking into a 3d view which is not a bad assumption, right? So the final mass of the system is the mass because of the existence of passengers, right? So we have three mass components in the system. And remember the car body not only has a mass, it also has a J or moment of inertia, right? And the other components or the other considerations are the springness of the system. So we know that the wheels have springness, both front and rear. The cushions or the seats have some springness. In fact, as you can feel in a car, the cushions or the seats have some sort of plastic behavior. And also we know that the system has some sort of damping, right? So remember, these are springs and we have damping and let's suppose that all dampings can be simplified as viscose damping i know it's not accurate but it is some sort of assumptions right so we have some sort of damping in the seats in the suspension systems and also in the wheels right so by all these assumptions and these components we want to draw the system as a vibration model okay so let's do that so with all these assumptions i want to draw the system again and show you all components one by one so we have the passenger so this is passengers mass right Then we have the car body, right? So car body mass and in a moment of inertia. We do have the wheels, so front wheel mass. And we have rear wheel, right? Okay, so we are done with the mass components. Then we go to spring components. So we have the seats, the spring. So we have seats here. We have front suspension. So we have front suspension. And we have rear suspension, right? We also have the springness of wheels. So we have D 
the wheels springness and as you know wheels are basically made of rubbery materials and pressurized air which also has a sort of elastic or let's say viscoelastic behavior so wheels spring or springness and this is the front wheels so we can call it front wheels springness and we have rear wheels springness I don't write springness anymore and finally we need to add the damping components into the system so the seats have some sort of viscoelastic damping so we have the damping because of the seats we have front damping right because of the suspension of the system and the damping component same thing for the rear wheels or say rear suspension system and also the viscoelastic behavior of wheels can cause a damping term in the system right so we have a damping both in front and rear we can also imagine that the whole system is on a rigid wheel now moving on the rough road so in fact we model the vertical vibration of the system using the mass components the spring components and the damping components right so we have k and c k so let's say k1 k2 k3 and if we suppose that the springness are identical on the front and real side so we have k1 at up k2 and k2 in here k3 and k3 then we have damping so if this is c1 we have c2 c2 then c3 and c3 so as you see it looks a bit complicated but we can add all the components that we need into our model so we will be able to develop a mathematical model for the vertical vibration of the car as i said this is just a conceptual example for the introduction of vibrations in the next tutorial we're going to have single degree of freedom systems and solve for the vibrations of them in different manners